This is Constant Elevation, the show for rising Air Force and community leaders who seek to define the future, learn powerful work and life tactics to tackle any challenge. I'm your host, Gabriel Gabrock Avila. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Gabrock back on the mic once again. Hope you guys are enjoying your November. Um, it's still it's it's cold. First off, I'm going to say it's got hella cold over here to the point where um, you know, I have to deliberately put like I'm wearing a hoodie now in the house. And so we got to make sure we turn on the heater at night and stuff like that. The wifey's on full time fireplace. Uh, it, that's where she goes. The fireplace is on. We have a gas fireplace. And so she stays there. Um, everybody kind of circulates around the fireplace, which is kind of nice. And so we have not put up any Christmas um, decorations yet. Uh, the wifey did say we may put up some early this weekend only because my daughter's working on Thanksgiving, so she won't be there to help us out on those, or not on Black Friday. That's why she's working. I'm sorry, not Thanksgiving. So the idea of Christmas decorating, we want to do it as a family. So we do maintain to some traditions, um, and so we will make sure that we move into the holiday and try and enjoy it as much as we can um, here in Maryland. We're not going anywhere, so we're going to um, take advantage of all of the virtual digital things going on. So speaking of virtual digital stuff, so um, a couple of episodes ago with uh, Colonel Pope, I made a mention in that thing about like uh, him and I, we both we both have like we both get caught up in our emotions where we hear the term, um, "Well, I'm just a lieutenant," and so I think that phrase kind of resonated with some people. And so, like, uh, um, uh, luckily, my guest on uh, this week's episode was uh, mentored well. I'll say mentored well by one of his uh, fellow <laughs> cyberspace officers who said, "Hey, you should listen to this episode because it has Colonel Pope in it. That's obviously why you should listen to it." And he listened to it, and he's like, "Oh, this is you know, this is kind of cool." And so he just uh, he just sent me a message, just say, "Hey, sir, sir, I really enjoyed um, the episode. Uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Um, I'm not just a lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Matthew Banuelos." And I was like, "Huh." Oh, that's cool. So we had a, a short interaction, not even kidding, like 3.4 minutes later, I'm like, hey, do you want to be on my show? He's like, huh? Like, yeah, do you want to be on my show? We'll just talk about some stuff. Sure. So without further ado, Lieutenant Matthew Banuelos, welcome to the show, bud. Hey, thanks for having me, sir. I appreciate hey. it. Yeah, man. Oh, this is good stuff, dude. I, I'm, I'm, we were, we were talking before I hit record and I'm always thankful for anybody who takes me up on my, my little show over here. That actually is kind of a legit show, but like it's, 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 it's low pressure, low key kind of stuff. He would, we were joking around when he was like, do, do should I be in uniform? Like what? Why would, no, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm not kidding. If you, should, if you, if I turn on the camera, you're in uniform, I'd be like, you, you made the wrong choice, man. I don't know what show you're going to be. You go get it really quick. Yeah. <laughs> or at least just have the top half. Just have fucking sweatpants on like, like normal people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so some of our origin story, other than the <laughs> random just kind of cold call and just me inviting you onto the show. So you are also a cyberspace a cyberspace operations officer. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I've then, been uh I've been at the five sixty for DOS for a little bit. Okay, cool. So I got there in June. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so, but that's not necessarily the start of your Air Force career, right? So you actually are prior enlisted. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was a reservist for about eight years. Uh, then I got out as a technical sergeant. I was based out of San Antonio, but all I did was push pallets. So completely different career field than what I'm doing right now. So yeah, there's not a lot of physical labor in, well, there is some physical labor in comp. It's my bad for the combat comp guys out there. Yes, there's physical labor. For cyberspace ops, maybe, maybe not, <laughs> depending on. So, so I'll say your story then <laughs> is a little bit different. When I say, you know, when when you hear people in general, this is a very much a generalization. When they say, especially when you're a lieutenant, and you say, "Well, I'm just a lieutenant," I don't think a lot of prior enlisted officers say that. I think that's mainly like the straight like OTS ROTC or wherever you have to come from. Like no, like me, I'm a pure. I'm not prior enlisted or anything like that. I'm just a, a pure sessions officer. And so when, when you heard me, when you heard us talking about that, what were some of your thoughts as far as like, when you hear, I guess you call senior officers. Yeah. We don't like it when people say, I'm just a Lieutenant. Well, so, I mean, I still hear it to this day. Right. And I, I, I like, Oh, he's just a LT here. And, and they're, they're joking around. Right. Um, and there's been kind of certain situations where, um, I'm trying to learn each shop at my squadron, right? So I'm going around and I'm like, hey, uh, uh, what's the scanning tool do? And um, like, what's the output for all this? And, and 
in the beginning, I used to preface my, my questions with, I just rub my little butter bar and be like, hey, hey, I'm going to ask all these LT questions right now and get ready, right? And so they're like, ah. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I don't. I think part of that, part of that is, uh, is really a degree of humility that needs to come in to the point where, because like, I think, um, and I like limitations there, there, on everything. So there, there are pieces um, where I guess that's you, my, my thoughts from it. Okay. There, there's some lag on here. So I'm just going to fill in real quick. There is a, I think part of it is just the, the humility as far as trying to not come off as like a, a know-it-all, right? So, you know, yes, you're the officer. Yes, people recognize that position of authority you're in. But when you come in and you say like, no, I'm going to ask you some questions because I want to learn, that, that's a good thing, right? And so like even, even just the uh, kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to ask you questions because I'm a lieutenant. Like, yeah, everybody knows that. And that's fair. And I, I'd say there's appropriate times where I say it as well. I'm like, dude. Lieutenant Colonel, right? It's been a long time since I've been around some of these behind the keyboard stuff. And so, especially for the, the up and coming NCOs and, and CGOs like yourself, like you guys are already light speed ahead of me where I was back in your shoes. And so like that idea of where you're curious because you're actually open, you want to learn. So that's good. Those are the kind of things that I think that that is the positive side of owning being a Lieutenant and understanding your limited experience, but you want to learn. The intent, and I think you understood it when I was talking about it, and myself and Colonel Pope and I, is like where it's the, you're just kind of like relegating yourself, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And you're, you're almost like you're giving up the responsibility. That's the part that we didn't like. It's a whole thing of like, did you know like you outrank like a significant majority of the Air Force, right? Don't ever say stuff like that. And you, you, have, to, you have to carry yourself like that. That doesn't mean you need to be a know-it-all or smart-ass. That just means that we all know you're a lieutenant, and that's, and that's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. And I think like getting over that kind of comes with time, right? It, nobody's going to come out of the door, like busting down the, you know, busting down a wall and being like, you know what, I'm not just an LT and I'm going to leap from the front and this and that. I think it, it comes with time. You build your confidence over time, but um, some more than others, it, it comes a little quicker than to, to others. But um, I mean, I, I mean, I love seeing, an LT kind of like, you know what, I had this really good idea and I love reading it like on the, yeah. you know, the, the officer like forums and all that stuff. Like, Hey, I had this idea. And so we ran with it. Now, now it's this huge thing. I was like, yeah, like an LT did that. You yeah. Know? Like, that's awesome. And that, that's where, you know, when you hear, um, you know, senior leaders, when they had the big push over the last years about like, especially for innovative and innovation kind of stuff, they're looking at the LTs. They're looking at the senior airmen and staffs to be like, you guys are the ones that actually kind of understand, or you're going to have at minimum a different angle because you're not jaded into the system as long as we have been. And so you're going to approach it to be like, why don't you do it like that? And it could be like, oh, that's cute. You don't know anything yet because we did that like five times and it, and it fails. And, so, and that's fine that you're coming up with that. On the other hand, you can come up with some, an LT, come up with something like, huh, why didn't we do it like that? That sounds really awesome. Like there's a thing that does that. Oh, yeah, this is on my phone. And we just kind of, you know, we just do stuff. And I'm like, well, shit, that sounds way easier than whatever we were trying to do. And so those kind of things, I think, uh, from just a lieutenant are awesome ideas. And that's those are the positive things that, that come around um, just kind of bringing new energy to any uh, team and situation. Um, I think there is one thing I, I thought about when I found out you know, when you told me you're prior enlisted. So I'm going to say in general, I've seen that be um, there's pros and cons to those to, to being prior enlisted for me anyway. And a lot of it happens where, because you get a, you get a certain degree of expectations put on you. Like when you tell someone I'm prior enlisted, like, Oh, okay, cool. Then it's a whole thing. Then you should know, you shouldn't know. In quote, yeah. you should just know everything. You should know better. And that's fair because I arguably your experience should teach you that, like, especially if you're not going to be a dick to your airman, or whatever it is, like you need to lead them well and make sure you're being a good example. And so if you don't do that, like for instance, if you're a prior enlisted and then you being like this, this crazy, like, you know, um uh, uh, Whipper, whippersnapper, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like the, you know, cracking the whip on your team and stuff like that. That's what I was trying to think about. Those are the kind of things of like, dude, what the fuck? You should know better than that. You know, you're not supposed to be doing those kind of things. And so I'd say that uh, um, um, 
depending on if it, it obviously like your, your prior enlisted stuff gave you a good experience. And so for me, as when I had, when I have younger officers coming into the unit and I found out the prior enlisted, I, I have to manage myself. I have to be like, okay, like what, what did you do? And sometimes I've had master sergeants and then a lieutenant now or a tech tech sergeant or whatever, or like maybe senior airman, it jumped up. It's all context. We have to take into the, take into, um, what your experiences are and let whatever it is, just leverage it. And then we'll take that and use it to our advantage. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, so when I was going through ROTC or whatever, it was, we had a bunch of, uh, prior enlisted people and you had like little A1Cs that were doing, doing the program. And then you also had like someone who was like a, like a tech, right. Mm -hmm. And completely two different mindsets, you know, in, 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 when you're the upperclassman, you're training the uh, underclassmen and you could see like the, the, they're, it's black and white, like the way they kind of hold themselves up. So, it, and, you know, fast forward that into active duty. And now, you know, now they're down, they're Lieutenant and they're bumped up against somebody like the same kind of, you know, people that they were going to the school, uh, the program with, and, you know, their expectations still the same, you know, so, you still have to make the cut to be, you know, to be the leader and to be, a, to be a good leader and a decent one. So, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, the, the, your prior experience for any um, coming in as a Lieutenant, I think it's a, what, what, what's really going to show out is the true kind of character of a person you are and the kind of leader you want to be. Cause we've been around, I don't you're, you could be prior listed or not. The one that just wants to be up front and just is we like, weirdly be in front as far as like i want to make all the decisions you have to get everything through me and, and like very controlling and mm -hmm. negatively controlling i'll say it that versus the ones that are really trying to lead the team understand it you know put them put the the team in front of uh, over themselves that's the kind of leader that arguably you can and like you said you can kind of see it you can see it where like someone comes in even from rotc you get a person as a flight commander or they're, the first time they get to go push a flight and you're like, okay, now you're just being weird. You're yelling for no damn reason. Like, what are you doing? And so, and I've been around those kids too. And it's just like, okay, you're, that's not what this is about. Or, and then on the, on the weird, the other side is when you're prior enlisted and all of a sudden, like you're trying to be too much of a buddy. You're trying to be too much of a friend, almost like, you know, you know, where, when you, it's that sometimes it's a hard jump from an airman for junior enlisted to an NCO and senior NCO, right? Because yeah. you're still, you're still around your peers. And then you feel like, well, I just want to fit in with them. But like yeah, noted, but like, remember what your place is. Remember you're an officer. You have to be, you're no longer enlisted. You have to conduct yourself, not significantly different, but it's different standards for us. And, and they're there for a reason. And so it's important for all the leaders to understand, even as a lieutenant, when you say just a lieutenant, you have so much power. You have so much influence over the force that you must <laughs> you must use those powers for good. Yeah, and and kind of people, I'm sure, like it happens all the time. They grow up really quick, you know, because I'm I'm older, right? I'm, I'm I'm about to hit 31 as a lieutenant, right? And I'm paired up against like my peers who are just out of college, right? They're 23, 24, and again, two different mindsets sometimes. Um, and, and it's not to like dog them or anything like that, but like I have a I have a coworker who's gonna replace one of the like existing OICs like in the next month, you know? And so like the learning curve is quick, right? They, right. they gotta do that turnover. They need to like, cause in a month she's leading like 50, 60 folks. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, Very saying great. that alone is a lot, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is, here's a funny story. I had a, um, uh, speaking of, you know, your your prior uh, um, your prior career in uh, logistics. So I was at a holiday party. This is when I was a squad commander at Holloman. And uh, we're at the holiday party, hanging out, whatever it is. And then like, um, there was an LRO, she came over. I think she was a second lieutenant and then she was like hey so and she was she was actually happened to be taller than me she was wearing heels too and so she was taller than me i'm a short filipino guy so like um she was like hey sir so like you know um how are you enjoying command she's just kind of chit chatting whatever it is and then she's like she goes so how big is the comms squadron and i was like i don't know like 140 people she was like oh okay i go hey 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 lt what are you doing she's like huh i go i know what, i just saw what you just did 
I was like, how big is your vehicle shop? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, how many people are in your vehicle shop? She's like, I don't know, like, like 400. It's like, I, I knew it. I knew it. You're trying to give me shit because, and I called over the contracting squad commander. So obviously his squad is smaller than mine. I'm like, bitch, come over here. And he's like, what's up? He's like, bro. I was like, dude, this LT is trying to shame me because I'm my, my, I'm my little baby squadron has only 140 people. And she's an OIC of like 400 people in vehicle ops. And then we started giving her shit. She's like, oh my God, sirs, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm fucking with you. I'm, I'm actually impressed. I don't know how to manage 400 people. I barely get by on 140 and you manage 400. That's actually really, really awesome. So I, I, I envy you. Tell me how you do that one of these days. Please mentor me. And, uh, um, and you know, it didn't, it, I think for her, I want to let her know, like, dude, you have actually numerically more responsibility. But I told her, I was like, my God, I got to see prefix though. You don't. I, <laughs> I did say that. I, don't care. I had to, I had to win something. And so, yeah. but it was just one of the kind of things of um, even at, at that, uh, a junior or a, excuse me, yeah, a, a company grade officer level you have a huge amount of responsibility and, and you need to take that seriously. That's all I'm asking. That's all I think everyone is asking anyone in a, in a junior officer, junior enlisted uh, position, just take your responsibility seriously. That's all. Yeah. I mean, um, I have a really good buddy who's an LRO and as soon as he got to his base, he had like 200 people. I was like, what is oh, going on? What? Nope. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you're like, I'm fine. I'll just sit here and crack on my computer. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So, um, you know, when you, when you were, when you got into a unit, did you, and this is not putting your current commander on, cause I don't know him or her unless I looked it up. Were there any, um, like general expectations they had for you as a Lieutenant in the squadron? So, so I kind of joined my unit at a weird time. So I graduated UCT in March and that's when COVID hit. Right. Um, and they kind of said they put the whole stop or uh, stop movement order. And right, right. Um, I was kind of in place in Mississippi for two months. Um, so at the time it was really weird. People were st um, still kind of getting used to like, holding like teleconferences and, and, and all that stuff, everything was virtual, right? So um, it was, that was starting to ramp up. Um, um, I got a call from my DO and he's like, he gave me the, he gave me the skinny on everything on the, uh, at our squadron. So he kind of teed, teed it up really nice for me to kind of feel welcomed and all that stuff, set expectations. Um, I think right when I got, physically got to the squadron, I, I, I had expectations. I had a one-on-one -on -one with the commander uh, that he set up. So it was really good to sit down and just have like a genuine conversation about, hey, how's, I mean, I know you've been here. He was like, I know you've been here for a couple months already, uh, but now we're able to kind of sit down and have this conversation. But like, um, what are your thoughts and like, what are your goals while you're here? Um, so after kind of spilling all that stuff out, um, he kind of gave his expectations for me and kind of where he sees me going um, uh, throughout my duration there at the, at the squadron. So it was really neat to kind of see like, hey, uh, he, he's kind of keeping an eye on like my career while I'm there as a whole. And um, it's, it, I don't know, having that kind of overview and, and high level thinking of, of an LT at the time, right, is just it's really, it feels really nice, right? Cause like they give the vibe off, like, Hey, he, he really cares about me. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a good sign of a, a leader that actually some people um, you're you, we loosely throw around the, t the term talent management. And I think part of that actually is, first of all, you actually have to give a crap. You have to actually genuinely care about a person in order to make sure you're going to be thinking about that. That means understanding, you know, their family makeup, some of the personal things, what are their interests, what are their weaknesses and strengths, and making sure you kind of play those up and build them depending on what they are and leverage them within the squadron because uh, everybody has strengths and weaknesses we can take advantage of. I think... For me, when a um, on top of that kind of normal welcoming it when I when I get a lieutenant in a unit, um, my expectations these are this is not unique to me. I didn't just come up with this magically because I'm pretty sure another wing commander told it to me. And potentially, I heard it from Chief Master Sergeant um, of the Air Force Bass. She might have said it as well. Um, 
and it's maybe it's a I, I'm a big fan of alliteration. So here we go. So for lieutenants, I expect lieutenants to learn, listen, and lead. And then we're done. That's it. That's all you got to tell. Like that's if I was sitting a lieutenant down, I'd be like, this is what I expect you to do. I expect you to learn because at that point in time, you're fresh, right? You just come out of UCT. There's some, there's a certain amount of things that it's only classroom. And so I get it, but like, I expect you to learn what it means to take your function out into the real world. Right. And so, and that's not the, the nice, um, you know, sanitized version of a classroom. It's real world. You have people you got to deal with. I mean, we, we deal with computers, but like pe people who, who deal with computers, you got to leave with that. Um, I expect you to listen. What that means is it's like the idea of, hey, you're going to be surrounded by other uh, CGOs, other field grade officers, other senior NCOs. All those people have a lot of experience they could be sharing with you. So I expect you to listen. And that doesn't mean just outright believe whatever you uh, whatever one tells you, like listen and, and take in the things that make sense and then get rid of the stuff that doesn't make sense to you or you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And then in the end is lead. Going back to you're an officer. That's what I expect you to do. I want you to lead. If you're going to make mistakes, fine. Not a big deal. Just don't, don't anything, do anything illegal, moral, and ethical. You're probably going to be fine. Um, if you want to double check, I don't mind you asking me as your commander. Maybe ask your, obviously ask your flight commander and everybody else in between. But like, I trust you that you're going to make certain decisions based on your capacity and based on your experience. I want you to make those things. And it's okay to make mistakes and then go forward from there. That, that would have been like my easy, I'm going to have to make sure I write this down. Because now, like if I get another, if I am in charge of a lieutenant and then I give him initial Spectre. feedback, I know he's going to be like, <laughs> uh, sir, you're missing something? Like what? Get out of my office. What about the L's? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give you the L's. Yeah, but I think, that's, I think that's fair though, right? Like for a lieutenant, that's, that's all I expect out of you. I expect you to learn, listen, and lead. And I think you're, you're going to be set to go from there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so I read this, uh, I think it was uh, from uh, General Mattis. He had his book, uh, The Call Sign, Call Sign Chaos. Uh, yeah, he talks about, uh, he quotes uh, George Washington, and it, it's along those lines. That he's all, maybe maybe he said it too. I, yeah. I, pro I read the book, so maybe, that, maybe that's where I read it from. I should go yeah. look it up. So, I mean, yeah, I think, so there's one, there's one thing in there that you forgot, and it's help, right? So, I mean... I, that, that that goes along with with leading but uh i mean i feel like you could help without leading i don't know but um i guess that's one no, that's thing that, yeah i think that's one thing that you, you could probably do too oh um, dude, look at you you freaking you nailed it i i just googled it while you're talking it says yeah uh, general mattis's philosophy summarized as learn listen and help then lead that's yeah. what i'm talking about yep yep so do See, you I need to do that in order, right? I don't the... know. <laughs> Damn it. Like, it's so funny. Sometimes uh, it's weird. Whenever I, um, whenever I tend to fall back to something I learned in, like, PME, and this is not PME. It's from a book. But, like, it could, that clearly could be some, in somewhere in PME. I kind of, like, throw up a little bit in my mouth. And I'm like, oh, did I just say something for PME? It really, it, like, it stuck with me. I'm like, oh, fine. I'm weird. No, I'm weird. <laughs> like, I'm like, give me the corny stuff. Like, I'm like, yeah, like to me, it motivates. Me too. Oh yeah, me too. Don't get me wrong. Like it, 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 it's in there for a reason and it works. And so why, why would I not take advantage of that? Yeah. I just know that like, I think one time we were, we were doing something at work and then I was like, are you talking about like the OODA? Oh, I just said OODA loop. Yeah. It, it was just one of those kind of things. I'm like, yeah, I learned this. In I just, and I graduated from command staff college. I was like, oh, okay. I know what we're doing now. This is dumb. I don't want to repeat it. But let's go. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, I wanted to get curious to get your thoughts um, on, on leadership. You know, there's a, um, where, where I work at in JVXU Doden, you know, it's a joint environment. And so there's definitely, um, uh, there, there's pros and cons to that, and it is what it is. One of the things that, you know, when General Brown released his Accelerate, Change, or Lose, like, I kind of took that guidance, like, to heart. I was like, bro, just hold my beer, because I want to go, like, fa like really fast, Ricky Bobby. And so I'm curious, uh, as a lieutenant, how did you take that message, and what, what are you gonna, how are you going to translate that into your daily leadership routine? Uh, so... I mean, I really like, you know, that General Brown kind of came up with that directive, right? And because um, that kind of takes away a lot of barriers for a lot of people. Um, 
So when I was in that weird period, when I was kind of in limbo waiting to physically arrive to the squadron, I was essentially just, you know, you know, trying to learn different things. I know, I know, you know, we're going to use PowerShell when I get to the squadron, right? So I'm trying to learn PowerShell, right? Things like that. And I was just, uh, any of like the, the paperwork that I had to turn into the squadron, like to, to, for all the incomers and stuff like that, like to get access to the, um, right. all the share drives, all that, all that stuff. Um, uh, my deal still gives me crap about it. He's like, man, you were pestering the hell out of me with those, with those forms. Like, as soon as I send them out, like I get them back in five minutes, he's like, okay, you got them? Like, are you done? Like, <laughs> good. Uh, but I mean, that thing he, he, he talked about, it, I just put on uh, first lieutenant like two weeks ago. Awesome. Um, Congrats. Thanks. Um, but he, uh, he had some closing remarks at my ceremony and he said, you know, that type, that same type of fire kind of in your belly, like keep it going, like apply it to everything that you're doing. And um, I mean, it, 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 that holds true. Like, I mean, to me, I, I feel like I'm going like a hundred miles an hour. Right. And um, we had this, they call it first term officers course. Right. So all the, all the people that just arrived at the base and you got like oh, senior yeah. those talking about stuff. Right. It's really, it's really good program. Um, but we had a colonel talking and he said, yeah, go, go a hundred miles per hour. Like you, sh if you're going to fall, you're going to fall forward. And I, that, I took that to heart. I was like, man, that's, that's some good stuff. Like if you're going to fail, like fail going a hundred miles per hour. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep, you know, grinding, trying to grasp everything that I can and just, just keep going. So that's good. No, that's real good. There, there's definitely that kind of attitude. And I think that's, maybe that's not unique to airmen, but I think it is. Um, may, and I say that because in an environment where I'm at now, like the other services are not as comfortable as moving fast as the airmen are in the unit. And I don't know what, I don't know if that's a unique thing based on the, the personalities that are in there. Cause I don't want to say like everybody, everybody from the Navy or even from the army, they don't like to move fast. Surely there are. But like it, where I work at, I tend to be like going really fast to the point where sometimes uh, I don't, nah, I don't want to say I skip chain of command because I know when I know the time and places where I need to go to the three star or the one star for certain things, just mm -hmm. from my experience, right? But there's some times where like I'm like I'm just going to make start making command decisions, and they're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Cause I'm a, I'm sitting at um, as a deputy division chief now, and I'm like, no, there's." am I the adult here in this room like for now? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to make this decision. Well, maybe we should, we should ask. I'm like, for forgiveness, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, let's just go. Let's just figure this whole thing out. And so like, even last week I made some mistakes as far as some of our, um, we have, we have a thing going on, release an order. The order could have been worded better, but you asked me at like, you know, whatever time at night. And I'm like, all right, well, whatever. And I own the mistake and I'm like, all right, cool. We'll just keep on going, whatever. Sorry, I, I, I meant this, I said this, but I really meant this. Just, you know what I mean? Just go fix it. And I don't get hung up in the fact that like, well, I need to have like seven people check my homework before I go do something. Nobody has time for that. And so, and I don't, cause I have, I got to go to the gym. Like this, this dad bod doesn't take care of itself. So I got to <laughs> go, I want to go have dinner with my family. And so like that priority of making sure I have that, that balance also makes me want to work hard and work fast. And so for yourself as a lieutenant, you should need, you need to take advantage of that, right? That's, that's those uh, in, in, in the junior ranks are expected to make mistakes. So make them like a gloriously, like it's going to be awesome. That, that freedom of maneuver, you know, when you get up to the things like you're, uh, are you sure you want to do that? You know, you're, you know, your PRF's coming up. You're gonna, like, nope. Like it's, it's weird when you get higher in ranks. So there is a part of me that envies the freedom of maneuver that junior officers get to have. And so that in, especially if, if, uh, but now I would say with general Brown, with accelerate change or lose, he's actually seeing all airmen, big A airmen. He wants mm -hmm. all of us to do those kind of things. And so I took that to advantage. I was going to work the next day. I was like, we're going to do these things. What? Like in four days, I don't care. Let's just go. And, uh, <laughs> and I took advantage of some senior officers being gone. That's beside the point. So like, we just get <laughs> it done <laughs> because I was the officer taking the risk and nothing bad happened. <gasps> Spoiler. So like those kind of things where, where we can, we kind of lead from the front and show like, it's okay. 
it's okay. Like it's, we were trying new things out. You don't have to follow the old hat all the time. And so like, just be open to ideas and then let somebody try it, maybe on a small scale and, and then prove it out from there. Those are the kind of things I think that are perfect at a Lieutenant CGO level. And then all of us could take advantage of like, see, I told you the LT did some good stuff. Let's go do whatever he or she was doing and let's make it, let's put it to scale and get it bigger for everybody to do. Yeah. And like, so I don't know, like, and that, that, that'll feed to other people too, right? You, you see other people like, man, they're getting things done and, and, you know, they're, they're doing, they're moving at a fast pace and, um, you know, maybe I could do something like that. And, and, you know, I, I, you kind of just, you see it evolve into like something that's really good. And I mean, people are going to fail and especially like LTs, right. At that, that level, you're, you're still learning the ropes. You're still learning your job. Um, and I don't know, like a I think lot of good, yeah, a lot of good could come from it. Yes. Yes. There's a lot of like, and if I, if I had an LT who came up to me like, sir, I got this thing and I've been thinking about this. I circled with the team. Like it, he wasn't, he or she wasn't doing it in a silo, like in a, in a, in a, in a whatever it is. I talked with the team. We kind of talked about a little bit more. I talked to the other guy and I think this is really good. You kind of pitch it. And then even when they're pitching it to me, I'm like, I may, I'm, there may be some parts on there that I think either I, I believe could be really hard or mm, you may not have those details already. So maybe you have some assumptions that are wrong. For those kind of pieces, I'll probably share it to you. Be like, hey, cool. So I like your idea. I'm going to give you some additional feedback because you you just didn't have this. And that's okay because you don't know what you don't know, right? But like it would be a disservice if I just kind of like deflated your energy. You came up to me like, check out, look at how this, sir. I want to do this and this and this. We can get it done in like two weeks. I'd be like, okay. So, yes. What, what do you need from me? Like it would, like I said, it'd be a disservice to turn down that energy from someone who's trying to do something right, trying to lead the team, lead the mission, those kind of things. Why would I get in the way of that? And so like, especially if it's, if it's aligned to already aligned to um, the current priorities, obviously like there's smart ways to do it. If you're going to come up to me with a project that's already aligned to the language and sh shit that I want to do, you, you had me at 51% already. And so, but if you don't have, if it's a brand, brand new idea, still try it. Right. It could be something that I haven't even thought dedicated energy towards and be like, somebody is checking my six. They're actually thinking about something that I've not thought about. So yes, I want to take advantage of that and then help me help you to make sure uh, to get this to reality. So like when you were, when you were, you were a uh, squadron commander, right. Um, mm -hmm. And you had like ideas kind of presented to you and uh, did it happen a lot? Or like, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, there would be okay so here's a couple things. okay so about, how about bad ideas like when a bad idea was given to you <laughs> okay okay so i think sometimes when the bad ideas here, here's a weird caveat when a bad idea was presented to me i say it was a bad idea because i think there were trying to present something that was like uh, the weird way i'm going to say it is they're fudging the numbers so they're presenting a project to me and they're going to be like, Hey, we want to do this whole thing. I'm like, all right, cool. So then how are we going to do this part of the project? Well, we're going to assume this other team does it. I'm like, you're going to assume that like, well, yeah, you know, because per this, per this MOA and stuff like that, they're responsible for that section. I'm like, do they know that? Well, they, they should, it's in the thing. I'm like, have you talked to them? No. I'm like, okay, time out. Now, now that's what I would say would be a bad presentation of something because you're trying to present to me a project to where that's really sort of only cited to the su success of your small team. And you are deliberately, maybe not deliberately, but you're not thinking about the bigger picture in like the second and third order effects. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that that just comes with experience. Right. And so, yeah. cause when I asked the person, they were like, they knew they're like, oh shit, he kind of, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, <laughs> He got me between the lines. They're like, yeah, 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 don't do that. Because right now, the way you're telling me this project, it's going to look really good. However, you're, you're sort of like putting away in the closet this other part of the equation that cannot be ignored. So therefore, you need to go back and redo your plan. And they did, and it was fine. What it, what it drove is it drove them to have awkward conversations because they, were, they were, had to go talk to mission partners for whatever odd reason, they burned their bridges between them or like it was a weird uh, relationship. And then so like, that sounds like a you problem. 
That sounds yeah. like <laughs> you need to go. You need to go repair those. Bring a case of beer. I don't care what that means, but you need to repair that relationship because they're still part of our larger team. And so, like that was the probably the only not not the only time, but like that's the vivid one that comes to my head as far as what was a bad idea as it came to be. Yeah, I mean, so I I can't remember. I was reading like some LinkedIn article about like how I mean, like suppressing all idea like suppressing ideas because they're bad ideas right so if like if you continue su to suppress ideas like you're not going to have any more ideas you can't innovate anymore you can't move right. forward right yeah you got you have to the it came to the point where um you know my expectations for for them is you don't want me micromanaging you and telling you how to go fix this problem like you have you have enough resources amongst yourselves and i expect you to kind of work through those problems, critically think and come up with a plan with the team and just execute it, right? Because um, I have I have stuff on my plate and my level I'm doing, and then I need you to cover down at your plate. And you have the freedom maneuver to go do things that you want, right? And so like, in the end of the day, I just want the mission to get done and I expect the other things to happen along the way. And so that idea, uh, when even small ideas, like one time, <laughs> actually, I, I gave him credit. So uh, he's, uh, um, he was recently selected for a DO, uh, Chris Arnold. He like made a command decision that he was going to have a bring your dog to work day in his building. And I was like, <laughs> I came over. I was like, what's going on? He's like, Hey, sir. I was like, cool. I saw his dog, other dogs. I'm like, I'm a dog person. So I was like, this is kind of cool. And he's like, yeah, I may or may not have. And he was, he was nervous. He was real nervous. He's like, so I may have just said where is bring your dog to work day. Okay like every Friday, sir. I was like, okay, are they in the customer service areas? No. You cleaning up everybody? Yes. Carry on. Sounds good. <laughs> They're like, oh, we weren't sure if you're going to be cool with it. I'm like, I don't care. I like dogs. I don't care. As long as you're, as long as you know, you're taking care of them and nobody's getting hurt. I don't care. That's fine. And then he was like, it really is a huge thing for, for the entire flight. And I was like, cool. Like, and he knew that too. He knew that there was enough dog people that like, it was going to be a good morale boost. I'm like, why would I get in the way of that? And that's, that's small. That has nothing to do with operations. That has to do with people. And so yeah. even those ideas, right. Of like, Hey, sir. So we thinking about going on a, here's another um, like secret. If I was a commander and someone said, Hey, uh, uh, so it's upcoming motorcycle season, safety month, whatever it is, the things, right. Yes. Okay. So we want to go on a ride, sir. We're going to do a safety ride. It's going to be half the day. We're going to go to this Harley Davidson place, have lunch and come back. But we're taking on the new riders to make sure they know the ropes, do check their gear, all the kind of stuff. It's probably going to be like 12 of us. We have like four senior NCOs, four experienced riders, and we're all brand new people. And I'm like, sounds like you have the whole plan. Carry on. That's it. Like, come to me with a plan and I'm probably going to approve it because you already know this is something that needs to happen. So you're just, I don't want to say you're taking advantage of the situation. You just know how to build certain ideas that are, almost infallible like why would i take away someone organizing a safety thing for the unit and enjoying a nice motorcycle ride we just happen to go in this place and having awesome lunch we're like yeah i wish i could do that too i have to go to these dumbass meetings so you guys have fun so <laughs> <laughs> i just right, get mad I yeah I, I just get mad i'm like well, whatever i gotta go to the wing staff meeting i'll see you guys later <laughs> so <laughs> walk away with your dog yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. So good. All, all the good ideas there, there is, um, all of us have them. I think, uh, if, when you are willing to be open enough and honest with yourself and do the work, right. And it's not like just come up with some random shit, like obviously do your homework and, and figure yeah. out a way to present it correctly. That, that stuff, we need that. We need that from every level. We need that from the lieutenants. We need that from the airmen. That's how we're going to get to that, uh, accelerate change or lose and kind of get to the air force we need going back to general gold fiends kind of thing. So that's good stuff, man. Good energy all day, all day. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. So I think, uh, we had a lot of good, I appreciate your time and just kind of getting the, the, um, you know, uh, I think you are the second maybe the second CGO I've had onto the show. So shout out oh, to you being the second thanks. CGO. No, it's cool. Like I, I, I my, my, uh, um, my circles right now at work tend to be surrounded more field grade officers, senior NCOs. So I'm always thankful and honored when people will be like, yeah, I just want to talk about stuff. Cause I miss, I miss talking to airmen every single day. I miss having these kind of mentorship moments. 
Um, I wish it could be like a Thursday or Friday with adult beverages and we're just kind of hanging out and doing this stuff and then going back to work because we know what, what needs to get done. And so um, the, the world is a small Air Force. So hopefully if you and I get to work together, that'd be cool. We'll, we'll never, okay. we'll, we'll see if uh, the Air Force, I, I believe there is a list somewhere that says Gabe is not to work, allowed to work with these people because the shit would pop off too much. Like be too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> too many good things would happen and everybody else is going to be jealous because they're going to have a good time and somehow they freaking take care of everything so uh, but no nah, this is uh this has been a really, really good time i'll offer you, you the opportunity any uh, final comments or questions you have uh i mean i just want to like say like thanks you know for having me on here um I know a lot of LTs are kind of just sitting in the background and, and maybe this is what they needed to hear to kind of, um, you know, take that leap forward and, and, and start, you know, leading the way they should, like it's, as not just an LT, you That's know, right. So. That's right. Or you will get punched in the fucking throat from me. That's what will happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Digitally, dude, I don't even remember where like there was, I think you said you, you texted me and it said like from not just an LT Barruelos. And I said, I replied back to you, throat punch incoming. I was like, I swear. I was like, oh, wait, he meant he's not a, just a lieutenant. My bad. Never mind. I was, I was busy doing something else. Don't worry about that. So <laughs> no, I'm glad I, if this is a, um, you know, there is a, I'll, for all the constant elevation audience, if there's some um, CGOs out there, if you want to do it like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, if you want to be on my podcast and ask me questions live, I'll answer them, whatever it is. If we want to do the virtual thing as far as doing the Zoom or Teams, whatever it is, more than happy to jump into any of the uh, mentorship things that are available. Um, you kind of know my unique brand, so you know what you're going to get. It's not going to be different. So <laughs> you might, there might be a little bit more sir or ma'am, depending who else is in the audience, but it's basically the same show here. So I, I, I try not to uh, flip it up too much. So Matthew, thank you, sir, for joining me again on this week's episode. Uh, Constant Elevation, uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.